So there's a lot of that on this uh, glider design. And it causes people to freak out a little bit. And let me talk about another one here. One of the other drivers for this glider design uh, that has just boggled my mind is how much it has actually driven the design uh, and forced me into design corners that I didn't want to go into, uh, but I'm, I'm <laughs> in for a penny, in for a pound, uh, is the fact that I wanted to make this aircraft home buildable. I want the average home builder to be able to do this at home with no fancy molds, no fancy tools. You don't need a lathe. You don't need a mill. Um, you don't need CNC machining. You don't need a 3D printer. You can grab your saber saw, your hacksaw, your little Dremel grinder, and build one of these. And it turns out that's a pretty high demand to, to put on this aircraft. You have a very complex aircraft design done in the latest composite materials with the cheapest of hand tools. Uh, and, and it has pushed the design in some interesting directions. Let me take a little sip here of my soda. I'll be back. Get a bit of a dry throat. So, one of the main considerations here was a home builder cannot make a set of female molds for molding all of these sandwich panels uh, to build the components of the wing because the molds are going to cost as much, if not more, than the aircraft. And he's going to use them once. It's just not doable. And that's the path that Rutan went down. Rutan came to understanding that, oh, I'll just put the fiberglass over the outside of the foam and I'll fill it to smooth it out. I'll put putty and filler in there, spray in some filler, sand it, polish, sand, polish, sand, polish. A lot of work. But you end up with an aircraft that looks like it came out of female molds, but you didn't need any molds. You, you, you used uh, a, what he called it a moldless composite construction, but I like to think of it as a male mold, uh, and then a lot of finishing work on it. So he substituted labor for the cost of the molds. And it's a smart move, and many aircraft have been built successfully that way, and you can crank out some really high-performance aircraft building them that way. But it was a unique approach, and congratulations to him for doing that for all of us that we can follow that kind of lead. And I hope to do some of the same things with my design. And the main molded component for this aircraft is the D-tube. D-tubes are the major structural component on this aircraft, in addition to the spar. Um, and they're a molded shape. They're curved molded shape. And how does somebody make these at home without fancy tooling? And I've spent years working that process out. And you can go watch the other videos. I have links in the description of this video of videos you can go watch on how these D-tubes are made. But let me tell you, getting to the final process that you see in the videos was a long road. And I went through a lot of stuff, tested components, threw stuff away, threw processes away. Uh, it's not easy. This was not approached uh, willy-nilly and just with the thought of maybe this will work. I have thoughts of what might work, but then I go and build them and test them. Uh, and this was this wing that I have here is how I tested a lot of those concepts. Um, how, how do you make the spar? How do you build that up so you can do it flat on a bench and it's easy to build? And then get these flanges on here so I can put a cap strip on. How do you put cap strips in here? How do you grab all of the cap strips? Uh, what does the trailing edge look like? You know, is the trailing edge carbon fiber here in the in the in the inside? I got fabric covering. I got skin. I went through a bunch of different stuff here, and this isn't the only one of these. And here you see that uh, the inside of it, once again, it's a single skin on the outside, nothing on the inside, foam rib, uh, unique uh, structural processes. Here I have fiberglass over very thin Arax with nothing on the inside, and it turns out it doesn't hold the shape well enough. This just, most of this was playing around, figuring out what would work, and most of it doesn't work. But occasionally as you go along, you get a good part, and you go, oh, I get it, this kind of works. I got some eighth inch thick Divinacell here, and I can wrap it around a male mold, and I can do a sandwich panel by vacuum bagging it to a male mold. And as I started working with the Divinacell, I quickly discovered I couldn't get the Divinacell around some of the tighter radii on, on the leading edge. I had a problem. And that's when I thought, okay, I'll just bite the bullet on cost. Uh, if some poor sucker's out there building one of these, 
I'm assuming that he has a wallet thick enough to do the job, and we'll just use the honeycomb uh, core material. Uh, it's order of magnitude more expensive than the foam, and it adds up in a hurry. Thousands and thousands of dollars of this honeycomb stuff uh, in a D-tube. And I, and I made a D-tube out of this honeycomb material. In fact, this is not actually a honeycomb shape. This is another shape, and this stuff is meant to go around compound curves or even simple curves, and it wraps around really easy like that. And I thought, well, I made a whole D-tube out of that, and uh, I didn't like it. It had a lousy surface finish on it, and it was uh, susceptible to denting. And I didn't like that either. So I thought, oh, I get it. All I have to do is get around the curve up front. And the rest of this is a gentle enough curve that Divinicel will do it. So I thought, aha, I will glue Divinicel to the honeycomb. And that way I'm using a minimum amount of the really expensive material and the maximum amount of the cost-effective material. And that goes whoop, right around the leading edge. Not a problem. Piece of cake. But it was still a dent-sensitive. And, and as you can see here, what I ended up doing was, in the molding process, I would fill a section of the honeycomb with micro balloons and epoxy. And you get a rock solid leading edge. You could probably uh, cut down a cactus uh, flying through it with this leading edge and, and not damage the wing. You know, this is like a flying uh, sword uh, or saber. Um, really tough, a little heavy. Uh, even though it's micro balloons and epoxy, that weight adds up in a hurry. But at the point where I was in this development, it's like, that solved the problem. And I, I uh, as a matter of fact, the test section uh, that I did the test loading on was built this way. It's built with a honeycomb up front and then a divinicel in the aft portion and it's eighth inch thick. Okay, um, but I got into this ounce per square foot problem and this eighth inch thick foam, the weight adds up in a hurry. And the D-tube is a large area. So I, I got to go to a thinner foam. And the only foam that I could easily access and buy was Arax foam. And they have 330 seconds, 1 16th. It's in millimeters, of course, because it's coming out of Germany. Uh, but I realized that you don't really need a full eighth of an inch thick uh, panel here. Because there's only one thin layer on the outside, three ounce fiberglass, and there's some five ounce, six ounce carbon fiber on the inside, uh, and they're like 10 thousandths of an inch thick. They have an eighth inch thick of foam here. Ah, it's a waste of foam. It's a waste of weight. Because in terms of sandwich panels, that is a non-optimal configuration in terms of strength to weight ratio. What's optimal is something that's much thinner, much more like this here. Uh, this panel is pretty close to an optimum. And it is really strong for its weight. It's really quite amazing. Um, and so I went with the Arex. So I ordered a bunch of this stuff out of Germany, and I pay an arm and a leg for it, and the shipping costs as much as the foam costs. But what do you know? You can wrap it right around the leading edge like that. And isn't that beautiful? That, I was so happy to see that happen. I just go right around that leading edge. I go, oh, I don't need the honeycomb anymore. Oh, great. I don't have to glue those parts together. I can just get one big sheet of this wrap it around my mold and mold the whole thing up. And I'll solve the denting problem up front here by putting in a, a strip of uh, carbon fiber here, unidirectional carbon fiber, and that'll toughen up the front end.